Hello everybody, how are you doing? Uh, we're beginning the abdomen block here in SHB. So I thought it would be prudent to kind of do a quick overview of the abdominal viscera using uh, this mannequin, this anatomical mannequin, this model. Uh, we named this guy uh, Arthur Cirrhosis. And you can see we've got his head tied down here so he won't fall off the table. And he doesn't want to catch a cold either. So without further ado, let's do a, uh, a quick review of what's going on here. As you can see, we've got everything removed here, heart, lungs, diaphragm. And we want to look here at the posterior abdominal wall. And some of the things that jump out at us right here are the 12th rib and some of the musculature. We can see the square quadratus lumborum on both sides right here, quadratus lumborum. We can see the iliacus muscle which joins the psoas muscle to insert on the lesser trochanter of the thigh as a powerful flexor of the thigh. There's also a lesser or a psoas minor that sometimes shows up, sometimes doesn't. Uh, by the way, the psoas is the filet mignon in the cow, in the cattle. Nice tender meat right there. All right, what else do we have? We have the vertebral bodies back here. You can see the vertebral bodies. And you can see a structure here called the thoracic duct. It begins at a swelling called the cisterna chile. So lymph, fluid that leaks out of capillaries, is then gathered up in little lymphatics. And that fluid then is kind of pumped toward the head, where it empties into a junction between the external juggler and the subclavian vein. That's the thoracic duct. So. We can also see the ureters here. We don't have the kidneys in here yet, but we can see the ureters. In terms of nerves, we have the lumbar plexus. That's what these white structures are, the lumbar plexus. I can name them real quick. The subcostal nerve right under the last rib, subcostal. We have iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal. We have lateral femoral cutaneous, which is, does the uh, sensation on the lateral side of the thigh. We have the genital femoral nerve, which pierces the psoas muscle. And it has a, a continuous femoral branch and a genital branch, which goes down to the genitals to do the cream, cremaster muscle in the male. And then over on this side, you can see the big, fat femoral nerve, which is going to go under the inguinal ligament to uh, innervate the quads, your quads. What else do we have on the posterior abdominal wall? Well, the aorta sits plastered. So let's put the aorta back in place here. The aorta and the inferior vena cava are plastered right up against the vertebral bodies here. They're retroperitoneal. They're covered by peritoneal membrane. And I'm not going to go over all the branches of the aorta right now, but there are three main ones that we're going to beat to death over the next couple lectures. And these are the three unpaired arteries. And the first one is the celiac trunk. If you follow these little branches back here that go to the spleen and the stomach and the liver, zoom in a little bit if you could, student doctor Bernzani. Thank you. The celiac trunk is here. And then the next artery is the superior mesenteric artery feeding the intestines, at least three quarters of the intestines. And the other quarter of the intestines, the sigmoid colon, is fed by the inferior mesenteric artery. We have some little gonadal arteries here that are going to go to the ovaries or the testes. And of course, we're going to have arteries and veins going to the kidneys. So that's the major uh, arteries off the aorta. So now let's start putting some of the viscera back in here. Um, this is the diaphragm. You can see the inferior phrenic artery on the other side. We hear the word phrenic. That refers to diaphragm. The diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve. C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. So the diaphragm will kind of sit like this in that position. Now it has holes. It has structures passing through the diaphragm. Does anybody know what structure goes through this little groove right here? Oh, that's right, Dr. Despartis, you're a genius. That is the aorta is going to go through here. It's going to sit right like that. We actually have a mnemonic for these three holes. It's I ate 10 eggs at noon. So I8 would be I for inferior vena cava is going to be at the T8 vertebral level. I ate 10 eggs. T, ten, I ate 
10 eggs. So it's T10 for esophagus. And at noon, aorta at T12. I ate 10 eggs at noon. We'll go over that again. So the diaphragm is going to sit something like that. So let's start putting some goodies in there. Um, two organs that are way back, retroperitoneal plastered in the back, are the kidney. Here's a kidney, a left kidney, and here's the right kidney. And also, sitting on the left kidney, you can see it right there, is the spleen. The spleen is way off to the left. It's often damaged in car accidents. It can rupture, and it can be removed, and you will be fine. Uh, it chews up old red blood cells, and it also plays a role with the immune system. That's the spleen right there. So you got a left kidney a little higher than right kidney. So kidney, spleen, diaphragm. Now I just said I ate 10 eggs. The 10 eggs, the esophagus joins up with the cardiac region of the stomach. This is the stomach. It has a cardiac region with a cardiac sphincter or lower esophageal sphincter, a fundus, a body, a pylorus with a pyloric sphincter. And then that is going to transition into the C-shaped structure. Student Dr. Bernzani, what is that? Which is the duodenum. This is the duodenum. Some of you people will say duodenum. Whatever makes you happy, duodenum. Now what sits in the sea of the duodenum? Look at that. That is the pancreas. It looks like a salivary gland. Uh, what does it do? Of course, it pumps out insulin for regulation of glucose. And also it plays a role with digestive enzymes. They, these ducts join with the ducts of the gallbladder to enter in to the duodenum. So that's your stomach. So your stomach is going to kind of fit right in like that. The largest organ of the body squeezes in here on the right side. What is that? That is the liver. Look how big the liver is. The, large, the real largest organ of the body is the skin. Okay, second largest organ of the body is the liver. And what do we see? We can see the inferior vena cava on the back of the liver. The all-important gallbladder for digesting fats is right here. And then the all-important portal vein, ducts, and associated arteries are right here. By the way, there's a little ligament here called the falciform ligament. And in there is the round ligament of the liver that is the obliterated umbilical vein. Falciform ligament is a remnant of ventral mesentery. Let us put the liver where it belongs, right there. Let us put the stomach where it belongs, right there. Very good. To the right liver, to the center stomach, off to the left left kidney, and spleen. So we're doing pretty good there. By the way, that's the superior mesenteric artery sneaking out. Now what do we have? Filling the rest of the area. Intestines. Here we have the large colon. Let's remove the small intestines. 20 feet of them right here. We can get a pretty good look at the large intestines right there. This is the cecum, okay? The small intestines end. The ileum dumps into the cecum. On the back of the cecum is your little worm, your appendix right here. That's the appendix hanging off right here. Okay, so cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, S-shaped sigmoid colon, and then into the rectum. This is the bladder right here. Okay, and by the way, these are branches of the superior mesenteric artery, which we will talk about. These are branches of the inferior mesenteric artery, which we'll talk about in a later lecture. Let's put the small intestines back in place here. And you can see how they fit right here. Are they, uh, student doctor Bernzani? Yeah. Are the intestines intraperitoneal or retroperitoneal? Uh, it depends which ones we're talking about. The small intestines. Very good. And the transverse colon is also um, the same as that. Did I ask you about the transverse colon? I figured it was coming. Okay, very good. <laughs> I like the way uh, you, you think ahead there. That's a beautiful thing. I have to be nice to him or it's going to shut the camera off. All right. So in, in being intraperitoneal, the small intestines will have a mesentery that you can actually grab. And that's what they're kind of showing with all this blue you can actually see the stalk of peritoneum that the vessels are going to come through and attach. So that's pretty good. Let's do a quick review. 
diaphragm, innervated by phrenic nerve, liver with falciform ligament, round ligament of the liver, obliterated umbilical vein, gallbladder sneaking out here on the right, stomach kind of in the center, pancreas sticking its head in the sea of the duodenum and its tail into the face of the spleen. The spleen is touching the left kidney right there. And then here's the colon, cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, small intestines. Let's rip those out again. Aorta, vena cava. Two kidneys, left kidney and right kidney. All right, I think that's enough thrown at you for an introduction. Good luck, everybody. Study hard because in five or six years, you're going to be taking care of uh, Dr. Freistack in a nursing home. Thank you very much.